Hey, this is Mike Renoir, Northwest Fight Scene, NWFightScene.com. Here with the one and only Dennis Holman. Dennis, how you doing? Great. All right, well, Dennis is fighting uh, on Saturday against John McDessey, UFC 140 up in Toronto. Uh, let's just get right into the fight. Uh, talk about your thoughts on McDessey. Um, he's a really good kickboxer, um, really fast for the weight, and has good judge of distance, and throws a lot of crazy kicks. That's, that's pretty much the gist of him. Right on. Now, uh, in, 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 you know, in getting, uh, before this interview, I uh, got online there and saw that he had a, a quote uh, he says about you, Dennis Holman. He's a very one-dimensional fighter. He just comes straight at you. My goal is to hit him from angles and make sure he can't touch me. What do you think about that quote? I've heard that, I've heard that game plan a lot. You know, it's the reason why it's illegal to clinch in boxing and kickboxing. It's, that's because when you clinch somebody, they can't kickbox you anymore. So, uh, we'll see if he's, uh, if he can execute his game plan, because I'm pretty sure I can execute mine. Right. Now, uh, it could be on Ion TV or Ion Television. Your fight will be on Ion Television. What do you think about that? Is that does that mean anything to you? Um, it's, it's cool because people at home get to watch the fight. Um, other than that, I think this is the last time it's on Ion Network as well, so. Right. Now, uh, other fights in the card, anyone that you're interested in watching? You know, honestly, I don't even know what other anybody else is on the card besides the main event. So Jones, Machida, who who do you who do you got there? Um, I, I, you know, I, it's a tough one to call. I, I probably wouldn't try to call it, but you know, the money's on Jones. Right. Now, are you one that watches a lot of other MMA fights? Do you do you pay attention to other guys' career? You know, in in your weight class, out of your weight classes, are you a big MMA fan yourself? Um, you know, there's certain guys I like to watch. I, I wouldn't call myself like a big MMA fan. I don't watch every fight or anything like that. Um, if it's relevant to my career, then I watch it. But other than that, or relevant to one of the guys in training's career, then I watch you know tape on those kind of guys. But I'm not, I'm not a real like I don't I don't go rent every pay per view. Right. Okay. Now uh, talk about some of the guys that you're training with here. Uh, Victory Athletics. We're here in your gym. Uh, big John Albert. He uh, Prince John Albert went down and and won this past weekend. Talk about that fight. Well, John uh, went in and executed his game plan in perfection, and he did what he wanted to do. We've been more, really working on him fighting inside the pocket, um, and not because for a while he was you know landing two punches, hopping out, uh, hopping out of the pocket, and then having to work his way back in. So we've been working really well with him, uh, and it paid off. You know, he landed a left hook with a beautiful right cross behind it, and and then you know his grappling took over, and uh, it was successful. Right on. Yeah, talk about some somebody last week or a couple of weeks ago. I saw that you had. Uh, Benji Raddick in the gym, you had Brian Caraway in the gym, Len Bentley, uh, Sterling Four, Misha Tate was here, so kind of like old times for you? Yeah, I mean, Brian and Misha live in Yakima now, so whenever they're trying to train for a fight, they come over and, and get ready, so you know, it, it's, it'll be like that pretty much whenever, every time everybody gets ready for fights. Awesome. Now, uh, this last fight you had with Ebersol, obviously, uh, you know, the loss was tough for you, but everyone was talking about the shorts. Um, <laughs> any comments on the shorts? Um, you know, they looked pretty sexy to me. <laughs> I, I, I heard that uh, you might have, uh, we're going to try to sell them on eBay. Did, did you do that? You know, I, I decided to hold on to them, you know, just because they're, they're the last pair they were allowed to wear in the UFC, so like, it was some nostalgic value to them, you know. All right, now, uh, uh, here's another question that I'm sure you've heard so many times in your career, um, you know, you're the guy that beat Matt Hughes. You got to beat Matt Hughes. Uh, I was at a fight event earlier in the year, and this guy was pointing. You know, you go out to one of his friends and says, "Hey, that's the guy that beat Matt Hughes." And you know, I was like, "Oh yeah, he did beat Carl Parisian as well." And they're like, "Who?" So talk talk about that aspect of, of hearing something again and again. Um, is it Matt Hughes retired? I think so. Oh. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter anymore. The guy's retired. Um, so I beat a guy that was a world champ. You know, it's it's competition, and what we do is, you know, compete. And I was, you know, I was opportunistic and I'm blessed to, to beat the guy twice, and he had a successful career. And uh, you know, and people think it's a big deal, and uh, you know, they can because uh, you know they, they look at it as something that that was uh, that maybe inspires them to to try hard to do stuff. You know. Okay. Now, uh, you were diagnosed with, uh, talk, tell me, pronounce this for me, celiac it's disease? Celiac disease. Celiac disease. disease. I'm allergic to gluten, wheat, uh, barley, and rye, and uh, it was causing an autoimmune disorder in my body, so I didn't know about it my entire life until I was 34, 
and so now I have cardio to compete in and in my fights with. So yeah, it's a good it's good for me. It's good. So now, are you working with a nutritionist at all, or is this something that you kind of this? I mean, I've been doing my own diet for eighteen months, so um, you know, it, it's just you really pay attention to labels and what you eat and that kind of thing. And uh, you know, that's pretty much what a gluten free diet is. It's just taking the wheat out of your system, taking the, the gluten out of a, out of uh, your your diet. Okay, um, and let's see, a couple more questions before you. Uh, you had a knee injury earlier in the year. Is that bothering you at all? Or? I had a knee injury like in February, and uh, it healed up pretty well. And then I had the, the elbow injury, you know, the day before I fought um, Ebersol, and that's it's still a little tender, but um, all in all, it's uh, you know, I'm pretty, I should be pretty healthy for this for this fight next week. Now the, the the elbow injury did that stem from training or where, where did it I come from? I woke up Thursday morning and my elbow was swelled up, you know, the size of a grapefruit, and uh, and it ended up spending a week in the hospital. The day I got home, I got home on Sunday and I checked right in the hospital, spent a week there with a staph infection in my in my arm. So I mean that was pretty pretty rough. It's hard to it's hard to compete when you have staph. No, so uh, you're flying out tomorrow uh, to Toronto. Do you enjoy fight week? You know, you obviously you get you know, a lot of media attention and a lot of hoopla. Do you enjoy that? Uh, it's it's diet week, and I don't enjoy diet week. You know, so I mean, I got I got eighteen, nineteen miles to cut still. So that's that's you know, I guess it's this, your show pay is your make weight pay. You know, so I gotta I gotta make weight, and then uh, so I, I you know I don't enjoy anything other than than rest and uh, relaxation. You know, I, it's. Fight week's just kind of stressful when you're cutting that much weight. Right. Now, uh, this fight is at 155. When's the last time you fought at 155? It's been 10 years since I fought at 155. So right. This is, a, this is a little challenge for me before the fight. Okay. Uh, and a couple more questions here. Uh, you, like you said, you're, you're 34 years old. You, you found out you have this. You're, you're training well. You're, you're conditioning good. Uh, but you're coming up on 36 now, 37? I turned 36 on Friday, last Friday. Oh, well, happy birthday. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, do you kind of have a, a game plan? You know, I'm going to fight for five years or seven years, or you do a Randy Couture, go till 46. I mean, do you I, have... I really honestly don't have a game plan. I'm just going to fight until, as long as I'm healthy. You know, if I'm 42 and I'm healthy and I'm able to compete at a high level, then I'll be fighting. You know, if I'm if I unhealthy at 38, then I'll stop fighting. So it's just as long as my body can stay healthy and uh, I'm still competitive, then you'll still see me out there. Oh, perfect. Well, hey, good luck to you in there on uh, Saturday. Uh, any any sponsors that you want to uh, give a shout out to or anyone to thank? Always Vision Quest Sport and Fitness, um, Body Logic out of Puyallup, and uh, Mass Suit. Those guys are all helping me out for this fight, and uh, especially Chip Schwartzel, who is uh, the owner of Vision Quest. Um, really thank him a lot. All right. Well, perfect. Thanks so much for your time, Dennis. We'll see you next time in there. Northwest Fight Scene.